härliga svenska västkusten. Ett himmelrike för kapare, silkungar och annat slåde. Livet i den bohetsländska skärgården har alltid varit starkt bundet i havet och gåvorna havet ger från sitt djup. När sillen kom in var det äborna i överflöd och rikedom. Men när sillen plötsligt försvann efter påtiden så föll öborna ner i ett förskräckligt fattigdom av vedermöda. Skärgården är svår att navigera med starka strömmar och lomska grund. Bärgyngfin styr över havet, vågorna och alla djupets varelser. Och sägs ha en fiskskätt istället för ben, en ugröpt fiskfödestäckt rygg och jälar. Sjöfar och visar nog att blicka henne med offergåvor. Hon kunde belöna det som erbjudande gåvor med gynnsamma vindar eller stora fiskfoster. Men å den andra sidan, det som inte erbjöd henne något, kunde hon straffa genom att skicka stormar eller placera isberg i deras väg. And welcome to our uh, little housekeeping episodes of Vizen as we prepare for season two of horror and mystery. Um, today we are playing without Michael. Uh, he has previous engagements. It's not like his character is dead dead, but we'll find more about that at a later point in time. So today we are playing with three of our regular people and a very special guest. Um, and we'll save the special guest for last. And we're going to start our hi, how are you uh, with Baker. Baker, who are you? Where can I find you? And who are you playing again? Um, I am Baker. I play Astrid. Um, everything is cool with her. She's not damaged in any way, shape, or form. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Mainly Instagram lately because Twitter makes me angry. I think a lot of us can relate. <laughs> Wild. Yes, hello. I'm Wild, uh, that Wild Engineer. Uh, you lady pronouns. Um, you can find me here on Twitch and on Twitter. Um, yeah, and I am playing Frederick, the uh, loyal servant to Linnea. Yeah, he's a big Speaking. burly rough guy. Yeah. Speaking of Linnea, Eva. Hello, it's me, Eva. Um, long time no see, friends. Uh, I am playing Linnea, uh, your plucky uh, private detective, who also is sort of, uh, yeah, being watched by... Uh... It's a complicated relationship, but I think they're doing okay at the moment. Yeah. Hmm. Speaking of complicated relationships, Sarah. Hey, oh, my name is Sarah. She, her. You can find me around the internet at, at Sarah L. Kinney. But more importantly, today I will be playing Elise, a concerned mother. I think we'll leave it there for now. I, th I think that's good. Uh, hi, my name is Anik. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Anik Sarah. Uh, also, sporadically because Twitter also tends to make me angry um, and I play everybody and everything else and I try to remember the rules um, and I don't always and that's why books exist um, and today like I said is partly a housekeeping episode we'll be leveling up our characters uh, there will be pitches about how to level up the headquarters um, and there's just a few little complications that need to be dealt with. Um, I think we're going to start with asking our players in real life, do you remember how many advancement points you got last season? Very good. Uh, Eva, would you like to give us a brief, very brief recap of what happened last season that led to all of this wonderful character growth very brief um we for all um kind of different reasons were recruited uh by a mysterious gentleman uh to lady well a lady on behalf of a gentleman also linnea um 
technically my notes start with uh, episode three. We don't know why. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I said jump in. That's fair. Um, and uh, yeah, we were brought to this crumbling manor house. Very fancy. Very, uh, you know, the, the bones of something great. Uh, and I sort of feel like that's how you could describe our team. Um, you know, a lot to work with. Uh, there was a, uh, a, a request from, uh, our, he's not really a patron, but Rolo, um, a friend of his to help with a missing child. Um, we found the child. <laughs> okay. Recap over. <laughs> Sure, that was definitely all that happened. How's Rolo feeling right now? Do you a think? bit of a headache. Bit of mm, a headache. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, there. So there might have been a few uh, roadblocks in the way. Uh, we made some great friends. We probably and won't see enemies. again. And some great enemies who we also probably won't see again. I guess that's six of one, half dozen of the other. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we learned a lot of valuable lessons about teamwork and timing. And did we really, uh, pull together at the end? Uh, maybe, maybe a little too late. Um, but not too, we did, we did successfully reunite child, uh, both children, uh, um, because there was a little switcheroo. Um, and I think at the end of the day, that's probably what's most important maybe not to rollo who would probably like to um you know be able to have brain function again. have brain function yeah um but we're working i on mean that. lilo would like to be alive probably yes and we're sorry for that we we do regret the circumstances <laughs> that brought that to pass however um Really, uh, I mean, that wasn't our, we, we might've been a bit slow, but we didn't like cause that. that was, someone else was being very cruel and bad and that was their fault. That is really at the end of the day, um, uh, that's on him mm -hmm. and he's dead now. And, and do you feel like your choices to like, um, rather than go out and gather informo information, but instead uh, do beer drinking contests. Um, do you think that might have, uh, what's the word? I mean, no um, one, no one caused can- Caused some issues? No one can know the future. Yes, we have a medium, sort of. So I guess we could mm -hmm. kind of know the future, mm -hmm. but at its core, isn't it still ultimately unknowable? Especially when you've had six beers. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. And like filled your constitution to... rolls. <laughs> yeah. And it's not hey. like any one of us tried to prod everyone into the right direction or anything. No. So, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. I um, passed my constitution rolls. I was only vaguely hungover and still drunk. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, no, Frederick, Frederick certainly tried. Um, to be fair, Astrid also tried, but she usually tries in the wrong direction, accidentally. Um, and um, poor, poor Comric. Uh, actually, he might end up real happy. Who knows? Might be true love. Um, has some watery issues as well. Um, nearly drowned in his inn. Um, all minor details. Uh, so now that we've traveled back to Uppsala, um, back to Castle Gillenkreutz, as it's called. How are you doing? How many conditions do we have? Ooh. Yep, yep. We got them all good. Frederick's all good. Of course you yeah, are. Nothing and just a little bit of stretching, exercising, and push-ups can't heal. I think my Must be nice. arm is still pretty banged up, uh, mm -hmm. as I recall. But yeah, I I have three conditions. 
Why would you come by some of those? Remember? I fell in a hole. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got in a carriage accident. Mm-hmm. 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 Um I don't remember the third one. I think exactly. it had to do with a flaming building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would have done it. That would have done yeah. it. Uh Baker? Did you come by your conditions honestly? I, I have three of them. I was wrong. My screen was a little scrolled down, so I couldn't see that angry was also checked. <laughs> um, I came by mine through um, reminders of an emotional trauma in past. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, uh, I feel like none of this is my fault. This, none of it was my fault. It was all other people. Um... Okay. Oh, no, wait. The time I did try and, like, commune with the ghost at the, at the, at the insane asylum probably was my fault. Just a little bit. Maybe. Just, just a little bit. Maybe, maybe an unwise choice. Yeah, no, forgot about that one. Oh, and yeah, there was the time that I used magic on Michael's Patrick, uh, uh, package. And became frightened because I nearly drowned to death. Yep. That was also yep. a bit of an well, issue. Yeah. Little so. bit my fault. But those are the only two. <laughs> I was I'm snooping, sorry. but it was only a little bit my fault. Alright. Uh, having come by all of these uh, conditions, fair and square, uh, regardless of whose fault it was, um, how about before we start the actual leveling process we go to the recovery rolls to see if any of these problems become permanent who would like to go first physical recovery first ah fine i only have emotional uh you add physique and precision for the amount of dice you get to roll. Physique and what? Precision. Good thing this is their specialty. Oh, attributes, not skills. I was like, I don't have that. Everybody has that. You may not have put points in it, but it's on your sheet somewhere. Um, and then for each success, you can heal a defect. Okay, so physique and precision equals total die, dice. Let me mute my rule. <laughs> Can't hear it by the face. We can know she's locking over her dice. I have two successes and two missing dice. Okay. That track. And I can just pick whichever ones. You pick which two, which two you heal, and which one becomes permanent. Any way to get rid of permanent ones? <laughs> yeah. I'll take Magic, it I assume. Strong, maybe. It's a, it's a definite maybe. Uh, I'm gonna leave myself s- wounded. And I believe it was my non-dominant arm. Uh, I think it's your non-dominant arm. Okay, that's it for me. Okay, <gasps> Astrid. Yes. Uh, physical recovery, physique and precision. None. You're all good. All right mental uh, defects as we lovingly call them uh logic and empathy i will point out that if you get like a med bay or something in the castle you do get bonuses to this yes Shabby. 
But is it not? I got three sixes because I can roll six dice. Wow, that's a lot of dice. I know. So story-wise, uh, we'll start with, with Baker since she just rolled. How does Astrid's recovery look? Are we are we meditating? Are we are we into talk therapy? Is there prayer involved? Zen gardens? What are you, what is what is Astrid doing? Um, Astrid gets back and goes straight to the library and starts researching medicine and um, spends a lot of time just like screaming at books. Like if anybody walks by, they can just hear her shouting random things. And like, there's some things that maybe she wouldn't want people to know. So it depends on what people overheard, but yeah. Uh, and Linnea, how's your physical recovery? Spas, doctors, massage? So absolutely, I think. Uh, physical therapy and massage uh, she's after that whole sanitarium thing she's a little leery on um, doctors with even though they were in the wrong and like the doctors were helping I was about to say the doctor despite the fact that you distrusted him the entire season the doctor was not a bad guy um, he wanted to commit Astrid for a very good reason yeah um and I just wanted to clarify, uh, the role I just did was for all my conditions or just the physical ones? Just the physical ones. Your mental one still needs a precision, uh, uh, a logic empathy role. Okay, in which case I do actually get rid of both my conditions. Because um, I okay, had two good. and I, I rolled two and I just misunderstood. That's okay. Um, uh, yeah, and I, I think there's a lot of like griping. Um, like people might find her um in a in a room alone somewhere like kind of like massaging her arm uh like sullenly doing it because she knows if she's not doing her like at home physical therapy like frederick will probably like get that look on his face that's like really disapproving and um and she she doesn't want that so she's powering through it yeah very good uh all right About the correct order of things here. I think character levels up level up before we do other things. So you have 10 points to spend. Uh, I don't hear my own music anymore anyway, so it's probably going to roll 20. I just had to um, adjust the volume and it came back. I hear it playing. Oh there it is. It's weird. It, 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 somehow it doesn't like being minimized. Which I guess is fair enough. Uh, let me go to the correct chapter in the book, because I'm going to assume most of you didn't read the level up part either. <laughs> Love innocent smiles. Da, da, da. What can we do when we level up? Something is there anything you already know you want your character to um, be able to do? Because you can buy in advance uh, for every five experience points. So you can either uh, increase the value of a skill by one step. Uh, or you can buy a new talent. Um, and when I say buy a new talent, you can now also buy talents that aren't part of your archetype. I took the loyal talents. Very nice. Um... I think Baker and Eva are thinking really hard. So we're I gonna take a yeah. 
I was gonna say I took the herbalist and the emergency medicine talent. Okay. Uh, because while if you only got loyal, you still have five XP left for another advance. You can't take computer list. That tracks. <laughs> Poor Comric. <laughs> Well, as long as he doesn't try to fight me again, it's all fine. Uh, I mean, did he really try to fight you last time? Because I seem to recall you started it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, yeah. It's um, five points for one talent. Yes. Uh, or uh, or a skill. Linnea would like to take the um. Eagle Eye talent. Very nice. Uh, and would also like to um, bump up her observation, I guess. The choice is for someone who likes to use guns. And solve mysteries. She's trying, y'all. She's trying. She is. She is. So while Linnea and Astrid are recovering, um, you know, screaming into nothingness, doing their assigned physical therapy, uh, Frederick has received a letter at the castle. Uh, would you care to share? some brief points with that or do you just want to tell me what you do about it um, i don't think there's much i can do about it i mean you know where the person who wrote this Sorry, uh, letter lives. True. No, I think I'm just gonna do what I do with all the letters I already received and just fold it up and keep it to myself. Fold it up, tuck it away, keep it to mm. yourself. Yeah. Never goes wrong. Okay. Uh, Elise. It's been a day since you sent that letter and you've received no reply. I think that the following day, right at the crack of dawn, a courier shows up with a follow-up message. And the note is very short, written, of course, in perfect hand. And it simply says, a response is demanded. I expect to hear from you soon. It will be my pleasure. And that's it. A hand delivered to you, Frederick. The courier stands there, waiting. Just uh, one moment, and I'll go over to Linnea. Um, Linnea, how would you feel about speaking to a possible suitor? Well, I have an immediate answer. Um, <laughs> But, do you know this suitor? Not yet. Okay. Do you know anything about them? Uh, I have not had the time to do proper research. So we don't know if it's worth my time. Where Nothing would... 
Well, I mean, I have other things to do. You have other things to do. Like, time is precious. Have we learned nothing from the past amount of time that we've been here? I don't know, have we? Did I hit my head? I sort of feel like... How long have we been here? Um, where would we meet them? Because I'm practically on bed rest. I, you know, with my arm and whatnot. I mean, you simply have to go back home. I mean, that's practically a mental condition in and of itself. Um... Isn't my home, like, not that close? Um, that depends on your definition of home. Like, how many- Your family has apartments in Uppsala, several country estates, so, you know, there is a, a town home nearby. Generally, if you're in the country, there is one of your homes nearby. I mean, I... Short answer is no, but I suppose I don't really have a good excuse not to right now. So... Wonderful. Well, I shall tell the courier to send the carriage immediately then. I don't remember that being my answer, but okay. Uh, the courier, uh, of course, relays your answer back to Lady Holmgren. Um, quite rapidly, aka the next day after breakfast, of course, never disturb anyone over breakfast. Right after breakfast, the carriage is ready to go. Um, question. Would Linnea have been able to look like nothing's going on for the all of yesterday, or would people have picked up on things? No, she was definitely weird about it. Like, uh, a lot of, like, moving between her room and, like, trying to pick out outfits, and then also just, like, slamming that kind of casual slamming of doors where you're mm -hmm. you're distracted not like mad slamming um and trying to distract yourself like maybe reading but absolutely like just grabbing a book so it's like the medical history of extinct uh canids in you know yeah wherever um and uh a lot of snacking i think Okay, so Rolo continues to uh, drool lightly, but on one of your snack runs, um, book upside down in one hand, snack in the other, uh, wearing some mismatched silk outfit that you, you know, abandoned halfway through as not being good enough. Um, I think Astrid would pick up on the state of things. I think she would also be like, to like kill time and distract herself like trying to read some of that to Rolo because I think she also like hangs out with him sometimes to just like Aww. keep him keep him company um yeah and and I'll have you know this outfit is going to be high fashion at some point maybe not now yeah <laughs> uh, so Astrid that um spectacle is currently Swanning through the hallways. Um, I think Astrid originally left the library to like tell Linnea something cool she just read that Linnea would probably find really gross, and then like freezes and goes, "When I read you that passage from that book, you told me to never touch it again and walk away. What's up? How you doing? Oh, um." I thought maybe I, I misheard you and this was oh it's it's not a, a romantic dalliance um in the rose bushes. This this is that uh Yeah, this this is gross. I why why do we even have this? Because I was trying to figure out if I can like investigate 
what's from people's contents of their stomach or their excrements in order to figure out what they've eaten. You know, you said it the first time and I was like, and now you're saying it the second time and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, I get it. I do. I, uh, on a, on an investigation level, I think, you know, valuable information. Yeah. I also just don't know if we have gloves. Uh, no, those enough. aren't a thing yet. I also just don't know if we have smelling salts strong enough. I actually, point out that friend... leather, leather gloves are absolutely a thing. You don't have plastic, but you do have leather gloves. Yeah, but are, yeah. And anyway. cocaine. Oh, and yeah. Cocaine. Actually, oh, I was just reading this thing in a book about a plant that will actually cause people's skin to dissolve. Isn't that cool? I'm so happy you're happy. Thank you. What's going on? Why are you so upset? Because clearly you're not like, you're not, your hair is not fully braided. And I, I love the outfit. I think it's <laughs> stunning. But normally you would tell me I wasn't allowed to leave my room looking like that. Uh, th this is just my excrement and stomach contents face. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm talking about the fact that you're wearing a, you're wearing like a purplishy shirt with like, is that red? It, yes. It's laundry day. It's, it's, uh... Wait. That's not even a full skirt tip. What's going on? Oh, just, you know, um, I, I just an outing, uh, tomorrow. Just, just a little outing. Uh, Frederick and I are gonna catch the sea air. The air. Country air. We're in the country. You can walk out the front door. Right, but there's there's a little bit of that, that must from the, the pond that hasn't been redone and kind of looks like maybe there's four bodies in it. Um, like the one the frogs won't even go into. Um, and then there's that uh, that ditch that hasn't been filled in that has the kind of blackish, weird-looking mud. Uh, yeah, I was told I wasn't allowed to touch that again. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Like, I get it, I wanted to. Uh, there's just something about it that seems like... But also not, not, not good. Uh, so, just... fresher, fresher air. You, you know how Frederick is, like... Yes, I know how Frederick is. Is this one of those things where you don't want to tell me what's wrong? Yes. Okay. Do you want me to just sit and be in here with you and maybe go get you an actual book you'll read? That would actually be really great. And also maybe a small bucket because I kind of feel like I might be sick. Oh, okay. Um, but never mind. I won't ask you right now. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Don't, she's gonna like pat Rolo's hand and just be like, don't worry, I I, I won't be sick on, on you. It, it's. Mm. Astrid goes and gets tea and a bucket and like grabs like one of Linnea's dresses out of her closet that she knows she actually likes and like comes back down with like also a book and like I made the tea. It should be good. You usually have pretty good tea. I know, but I've been playing with herbs again. This seems safe. And she's yeah. just, she's gonna sniff it, but not in like a suspicious way, just like the, you know, sommelier sort of way. Um, what kind of tea is it? Like, it has nettles and a little bit of snow algae, which is regularly found throughout the countryside. Um, that's perfectly safe to eat if cooked. I did actually do research on this plant. Um, but it can also be used as like an antiseptic or like a calming agent or, you know, that kind of stuff. It is very good. Thank you. Thank you. 
so we don't have to talk about it but do you want me to send you some of that send you home with some of that like herb that makes your stomach hurt yes please i'll go find some tonight when do you leave to go take in the air Probably just after breakfast. That's the most yeah. civilized time. That seems the most likely. I couldn't say for sure. I can make that work. How long does it take for that stuff to kick in again? Well, it depends on how much I've let it dry. So the fresher, the better. So like fresher or you know i did recently like get some new sleeping pills that could be dropped into someone's drink and they don't look alike right like i, I can just no not at all one's an herb one's in fact the tea that you're drinking but like if you don't cook it 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 does hurt your stomach real bad like real bad not won't kill you just well i mean yeah i'll just take both that's that's fine okay that's okay do you do you have like a, a little bag i sort of feel like maybe for the country i shouldn't take my like my doctor's kit you know that that big bag with all my stuff in it yeah i have a little pouch okay. where i normally hide my sleeping pills and things like that ties on the inside of your skirt Yay. You have to love the non-committal and things like that. Yeah. Oh, I do. I do love that. Uh, Freddy, are you up to anything exciting this particular evening? While the ladies lady, which is definitely a verb, Um, I just think um, we're pretty much heading out first thing in the morning, right? After breakfast. Yeah, yeah. So I'll most probably... important meal of today, no skipping it. If I get a chance, I'm gonna try to discreetly pull Esther to the side for the moment. I mean, Leia seems distracted, so it's easy enough to pull Esther away at some point. Did I do something wrong again? Not yet, no. Oh, okay. Um, not sure if you've been informed, but... You should probably keep this from Linnea if she has yet to tell you. But we are going to speak to a potential suitor for her. Now, it not, may not be... Something I approve of. Linnea definitely would want you to, um, I don't know, be aware maybe. And if you would like to potentially possibly have some sort of say, I would suggest you figure out how to become a proper lady at some point. Oh, I, that, that would be a little hard. That's it. Good night. Okay. Can we poison them? Like, I, I've been learning about plants. We could easily poison whoever this suitor is. I can make it look like an accident. You did hear me say proper, correct? I mean, I feel like proper women poison their husbands all the time. It is a common thing. I should know, I, I, I've hung out with witches, they regularly sell things to poison people's husbands. Whether that is the case or not, I think you should first be able to survive a proper tea ceremony. Oh, that's going to be a lot harder. Mm. Good night. Uh-huh. Ashwin's going to go back to her library and start prepping a little 
bag for Linnea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. And she's going to label them. In plain English? In plain English. That is appreciated. And one of them is just going to be, if you add this much sleeping pill, it will kill them. Do we speak English? I is this recommend. A trick question? And then I'm like, and I recommend, and then she rewrites the dosage that she put before, that you use this much on anyone who might do something wrong. Now, as someone who's been an aide in uh, basic chemistry, chemistry labs, this is going to get fucked up because I've seen people calculate dosages and be off by a kilo and it's ridiculous and I am here for it and I'm super excited. Oh no, she put like a big number on there. <laughs> it's just like grind that shit up and put it in their drink. Remess, remember, okay. that's why points matter. Kilo is they a really lot though. Do. Like... I get like being off like what's one person's pinch compared to another's but I so small sidestep because we all know I cannot focus in a game to save my life even though I'm technically not ADHD I was in labs with uh, apothe apothecary students um, in their uh, second to last year so they were almost done with everything and about to be unleashed upon the population and one of them actually made such a horrendous mistake in decimal points that she was prescribing someone a kilo of aspirin and she didn't even blink when she handed in her paper. Well, math works out. So I'm very excited for this because I know where this goes. <laughs> what are the chances that um... There's some hemlock growing. What month is it? Uh, well, you finished the... I, I love how we recapped season one without using the word troll. Uh, you finished the troll thing. Um, if I remember correctly. Uh, They're friend-shaped. <laughs> I don't get distracted by the tail. Okay? The tail uh, makes it better. Yes, I'm trying to do math on, because I told you how long the boat trip was, and I'm assuming nobody wrote that down. Oh, I might have. I'd... So so I'm redoing the math on that stupid boat trip. There or back? Uh, well, you went there, did the thing in, I think, five days, and then back again. Literally, the first note I have in this notebook is Linnea takes shots. Oh, no, no, at Flying Seagulls. Oh, that is the boat trip. That is the boat trip. I just thought it was the, the drinking, the beer. But that still doesn't... <laughs> so what month was... Is it... Like, what it depends month? on if the boat trip was several weeks or several days. I remember the boat trip being a week. Michael says okay. three days. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> See, this is where the post-it system fails and where I rely <laughs> on my players to actually um, remember shit. Well, that was awesome. Okay, so three days there. Three back. Um, right, because you were on a deadline and you skipped a few things. Ish. Kind of got heavily distracted by Lilo and then got distracted by the priest. And I'm still doing time math. Why can't I do math anymore? I used to be really good at this and then I got a burnout in COVID and now everything's just gone. I used to be able to do things. <sighs> also, just... it was the summer, so we're about three weeks out from the summer solstice. Okay, so it would be June. Two weeks out from the summer solstice, but that's so, still June. Well, yes, July. Um, 
can Astrid go looking for some hemlock? Yes. Okay. What would I because roll the for? the sh the showdown with the trolls was literally on summer solstice, and then you did hang out for troll parties, yes. and then you then you journeyed back. So say you're about two weeks out from the summer solstice. That's yeah. that's that's five days of hanging out with trolls. That sounds that sounds reasonable, I think. Prime growing time for hemlock is between June and August. So you'll be good with finding some hemlock. Okay. I'm going to grind up the roots of that and just a tiny bit. And just mark it for emergencies only. No cure. Okay. I mean, that stuff grows everywhere here. So yeah, if yeah. you want, you can have you can you can have bags full if you want. I did my research on what grows where. Also, thank you yeah. for saying no cure because I feel like Linnea would know then not for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've marked everything like for Linnea, not for Linnea, not. <laughs> like Astrid is remember trying to like be like no go follow them there's a troll and Linnea just being like oh I think she wants me to get a flower like she's it was very it was very romantic <laughs> it was but like Astrid is remembering the hand signal issue that was hilarious and only nearly led to your demise yes nearly Okay, so labeled hemlock, labeled sleeping pills. And labeled uh, red snow algae. Labeled red snow algae. Okay, perfect. Any other preparations anyone wants to make tonight? Uh, Sarah, this includes if Elise wants to prep anything. You have a lot of resources. I'm just... Would Elise have the suitor? Uh, at the townhome with her, or uh, would it make more sense for Elise to perhaps have initial conversation? Uh, or I think he can she have he would, the ability to? Yeah, no, he'd be nearby, but he wouldn't be in your townhome with you. But he'd be like on standby. Perfect. Um, so there's a lot of like if you if you touch the table at a certain point in a certain way, one of the servants is going to get him there like within two minutes. He knows perfectly well he shows up or he's. He might as well be dead. Perfect. Uh, Elise, I think, has just recently arrived at the townhome and is spending the evening getting it ready, uh, speaking with the cook, making sure that the correct things are prepared for the next day, talking with the house staff, making sure that kind of everything is just so, and kind of almost arraying it like it's a, a battlefield, because in a way, it is. And it's kind of is. Uh, so Mills stayed behind at the country estate, um, as is fitting, <laughs> you know, this is woman's work. Um, did you bring Agnes or did you also leave her in the country? What is Agnes and Linnea's relationship like? Uh, completely different people who get along in a very superficial way. Does Elise think that Agnes's presence would help bring Linnea around or would it cause more friction? I'm looking at Eva, but I think it would cause more friction because then you, you you're, it's very easy to take that turn into golden child and fuck up dynamic. Yeah, because I was going to say, like, between the two of them, it would have been fine. But I think, like, in, like, performative child dynamics, it, yeah, it, the risk is, I don't know as Elise would risk it. So it, as much as Elise would love to see her daughters speaking, spending time with one another, it pains her, but she goes alone. That makes sense. Ooh, we, we move. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Dogs Lin were led into my room. Linnea would like to 
like, uh, I assume <laughs> Frederick would, like, brush out her dress, whatever it is that, like, Take a, you know, shake it all of the moths, you know, make sure there are no unsightly holes from it being in the closet for too long, you know. And I think she Iron probably... and everything out properly, make sure everything is starched, the usual. And Linnea would have asked, I think, his input as to, like, what dress would be best. Uh, she would like wash her hair um you know make sure her nails are clean uh everything looks tidy um uh i think that's probably and she's not getting that pouch from astro till the morning right uh astrid, astrid would have probably like walked up and like gave it to her in her room as soon as she was done putting it together. Okay, then she would like read the uh, out, out of sight probably of Frederick. Um, uh, she would read the uh, the notes and just kind of familiarize herself with the uh, Not contents necessarily, but kind of kind of do a practice like, okay, like how how stealthy can I be about accessing this? I mean that's a very valid question. So, um you I mean you grew up with her. You don't usually get away with lying to your mother. No. Which is why she's practicing. <laughs> Smart. Uh, and that would uh, include, like, it. I feel like Linnea probably already has, because she's got her pistol or revolver. Um, if she doesn't already have a slit in her pockets, like, to access the pouch, like, she would she would create that. Um, okay. Although I kind of feel like she would already have that. I think you already have. Um, especially considering you have a, a, a nicely engraved hip flask as well. Frederick has prepped two outfits for you. One is like a decent riding one, you know, the usual it's things you can ride side saddle in. Um, and one is a proper, you know, tea gown, you know, not as easy to move in or whatever, you know, hold them up to you. Like, which one would you prefer? I mean, the writing one, if it was just me. But he hands you the other one. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. You know. <laughs> you knew. Um, yeah, and she'll she'll just kind of run her hand over it, um, her clean hands over it, uh, thoughtfully, and then just you know, nod. Just make sure to steal yourself, young lady. She'll possibly be entering, in, entering a uh, verbal spa, so to speak. Make sure your thoughts are in order. Your arguments, if needed, in place. Well, better my thoughts in order than my affairs. Uh... Good luck with that one. We've got this. This, you know, well, it's... Listen, yeah. this is all on you. Yep. Thank you. It's a, it's a few hours and some tea, and we get to see mother. What a joy that will be for both of us. Uh, and then we can come home. Or here, or whatever. Back here. Oh, and... If this suitor seems to be... troubling in there... Mm, 
disturbing manner, please let me know and I shall take care of it for you. I've been meaning to say, you look even more intimidating than you did before. Like, you've really, you know, you look like you've put in some work. In, like, mm. the scary, uh, you know, bouncer sort of way. And I appreciate that. I'll make sure to, uh, hide that work. Can't go around scaring off all the suitors. And there's a chance that he's not an absolutely miserable excuse for a human being. <laughs> Maybe. Well, as long as you give him a proper talk, we shall find out. I'm sure your mother would be very appreciative of giving him a fair shake. At least we have breakfast to look forward to. Mm. And dinner. We'll have dinner at some point. That'll be great. Oh. I'm sure back home I will be relegated to the servant quarters, but there will be dinner. Wait, how long are we staying? Long enough. Th th this is just like a day trip, right? That was... Is this not just a day trip? I guess it all depends. Maybe you better bring both dresses in case we need to, like, make a quick getaway. Oh, it's fine. There are outfits there. I know, but they fit funny. I don't know. It's been a while since I've, like, gotten new clothes or whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Fine. Everything will be fine. And everything was fine, and thanks for coming to face me. <laughs> oh, well, I was about to ask her letting Astrid dress herself. Astrid has yet to ask if she's coming with. I kind of assumed that Frederick telling you to learn how to take tea like a proper lady was both a threat and an invite. Oh, Ashton did not pick up on that. <laughs> <laughs> that feels that feels legit. That, that feels, feels that feels right. It does. Baker didn't either. That Baker thought that was like, a, if you don't want her to marry some random dude, get your shit together. <laughs> Season two starting off strong. Like, I'm, wow, Frederick's being real supportive of that shit right now. <laughs> okay, as soon as you get to the sentence Frederick's being real supportive, there should be alarm bells <laughs> going <laughs> off in your head. <laughs> okay, so Astrid's staying behind, apparently. <laughs> Uh, Astrid she... asked Linnea when she dropped off the package if Linnea would like her to come with. Is that an option? Yes. I mean, if you wanted, to... okay. I mean, obviously I want you there. Okay, you might need to pick out my clothes. I'm gonna go pack more things to poison people with. Like, the thought of <laughs> playing dolls with Astrid, like, just being able to yes, Linnea dives into her closet and, like, like, obviously, like, she could go and see what Baker has, or what Astrid has. No. Absolutely not. I think, I think Linnea and Astrid have been fighting because 95% of what Astrid walks around in is just, like, pants and shirts. Yeah. <laughs> this is her moment. Yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, Astrid's rushed off to find more things to poison people with, which is amazing because when she took the herbalist talent, she's like, I'm going to heal people. Uh, Learn Linnea... other skills. Mm -hmm. uh, Linnea, what do you dig out of your closet for Astrid? What's the, the tea party battle armor we, we should be envisioning here? Um, Something, obviously, like, 
tea room appropriate, but not as constricting as Linnea has. Something um, easier to move around in, something um, uh, maybe something with a top and a bottom. I'm trying to remember like how dresses work. Um, uh, if you want to go full day dress, you can go, I mean, you can technically go top bottom, but there will be a full uh, dress underneath. Yeah, well, I mean, she can layer, that's fine. Um, and, uh, yeah, something kind of like in theme with what Astrid like tends to like, like colors wise and stuff, but you know, more muted and demure and, um, uh, because she's also like she doesn't want to like trick Astrid into like liking things like this but she also doesn't want it to be a punishment right like um it's a thank you for supporting me and as a thank you I'm going to make this as unhorrible as I can yes so, like not, to... so not what I just linked in the discord I would like to know how you get more uh, muted than uh, undyed brown like undyed leather. That is oh, good lord! But um, <laughs> yes, no? but like like a like dusty colors, like uh, like a dusty rose or a uh, uh, cadet blue or something, as opposed to like bold jewel tones. I mean, most tea dresses aren't. Balls, jewel tones, you know, that, that's that's okay. Um, there is no leather option, I'm afraid. I assumed not. Okay. And just for a variety of look, reasons. I've been role-playing with you people for a long time. I know the kind of shit you come up with. For a variety of reasons. <laughs> Don't say a rope would exist. <laughs> Linnea would obviously want, like, the attention on her. Um, and this is not... So yes, to actively overshadow Astrid, but in like a... Astrid is not going to want to be the center of attention for a number of reasons in this situation, nor should she be. Um, yeah, so there's there's like that dynamic as well. Fair enough. Uh, so Astrid, you return with your uh, poisoner's kit. Um... And I got see... some medical ones too. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see how Linnea, next to uh, her outfit that is still being uh, perfected by Frederick, um, is holding an additional tea dress. I'm wearing that, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Yeah. You're excited about this, aren't you? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. I can do this. This will be fine. Yeah, I got this. At some point during Vizen, I'm going to start making little check marks every, one, every time someone says, We're fine! And it's a blatant lie. Yeah. I'm afraid I'd like to hold the dress up towards like now and just outlining it, or towards Astrid outlining it. Like, mm, let's just start. Hey, hey, I think that's the closest he's come to complimenting me. I think you're right, actually. Yeah. This uh, outing just got a lot better and also a lot more complicated. But it's yes, volatile. I... Volatile, is, volatile is the word I was looking for. I was like, not fraught, but yeah. Linnea, did you know that some things like certain plants or powders can be absorbed through the skin and are poisonous and we shouldn't sprinkle them into anything. We should just blast. Interesting. Yeah, I was reading about it earlier. Frederick, did you know this about poisons? Not to speak about poisons. Okay. Not a dinner topic. Got it. Tea topic? No. We got this. Pretty much anything you come to uh, me with as like a, a fun fact At least out the gate, best to avoid. Like, we'll, we'll play it by ear, but, um... 
Just about everything you should speak about. There's something you shouldn't. That's it. Uh, this is why I don't I, go home a lot. I have an idea. I will talk like the ladies in your books. Yes. Yes. I can do um, this. The like romance ones, not the detective ones, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, are we talking team just a tip here with the quivering members and the. Oh boy. <laughs> just the tip, oh my god. happened that was a thing that we did I, I i remember that happening it was yep that made it into my notes not how long the boat trip was <laughs> <laughs> look uh linnea clearly has priorities <laughs> all right preparations completed uh Acceptable night sleeps are had. I mean, even if Linnea would like to toss and turn, I'm pretty sure Astrid's going to medicate you. Yeah, I assumed. I assumed um, more tea would be had. Yeah. Uh, breakfast. And your carriage arrives. It's a fancy one, right? Of course it is. She sent a good one. You know, the four horse one. Matching. Duh. Wait, do they use those bridles that hurt horses' mouths? They better not. Uh, they don't, actually. Okay. Snapples. I mean, last time I drove a carriage, they didn't even have bits anymore, so you don't even need them. Uh, they do have the uh, obnoxious um, monogram on the door, uh, it's matching grays. class. Sure, yes. I will point out, like, I'm sure Astrid would consider it a box just because she's Astrid. This is very much um, old name, old money, um, doesn't throw the wealth in your face. Like, everything's well made, well kept. Uh, not, there's not, not, nothing's gilded, you know, nothing's too ornate. Just everything looks like it's probably the most expensive option you could have gotten without making it trashy. I want to be clear. Astrid is actively trying. Like She asks Linnea, do I put my dress on now or do I wait until we get to your house? And like, if she is wearing it now, she like took like five extra napkins and is like eating like this at the breakfast table. Just like trying really hard to be good. She's I trying. <laughs> I picture you like having breakfast in your regular outfit and then gently being put into your dress. Okay. It's like it's like you don't put on the fancy outfit like after you brush your teeth and stuff because toothpaste okay. and stains and terribleness. And there's definitely assistance, like not only because of like time constraints, but also like everyone in the house knows Astrid does has not put on dresses like this, at least recently. Yeah. There. She's chewing oh. on some mint to try and make her breath smell good. Like, she's trying. Trying real hard. Yeah. Relatively uneventful trip. Um, not too short, to be fair. Um, like, Gas Castle Gillenkreutz is not in Uppsala, it's just outside of Uppsala. So, we're talking like you'll be arriving around lunch ish what we call lunch now. Uh, you pull up to a townhome. Um, large, uh, but again, not ostentatious. Uh, well-kept flowers, uh, well-kept brickwork, uh, and obviously all the servants are ready and in attendance and will open the carriage for you. Before the door opens, I think Linnea is just gonna like reach over to Astrid and like give her hand a little squeeze. Astrid, in a surprising moment, is just gonna squeeze it back and be like, "We got this. We can do this. We got this. We got this." Right, Frederick? 
Good luck, Tifothy. That was actually pretty good for him. It was. Yeah. I think you're growing on him. I think so, too. Mm, I'm glad you think that. Or he has deeper machinations that no one could possibly know. Mid-sentence, the door opens. Uh, Linnea will disembark as is appropriate. Um, uh, and all of this is old hat. Like, she's not impressed by. I mean, this is where she's from. So, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, I mean, and, it, it, you are literally coming home. Yeah. And she'll. Uh, if there are servants that she recognizes, um, you know, she'll smile at them. She'll. Anything like appropriate. Um, you know, she's not going to hug. Yeah, yeah. Not, not too overtly, but yeah, she'll she's kind to to everyone. Um, uh, you know, acknowledges them. Um, but certainly, if there are uh, older ones that she recognizes, you know, there might be a small smile or a nod or something. Um, and are there any interesting plants uh, between the carriage and the house that the castle doesn't have? Uh, nothing that lets you poison anyone. No, no, no not all... what I'm asking. Not what I'm asking. <laughs> Interesting in this, they're all uh, picked for uh, being incredibly pretty. Lots of roses. Uh huh. Um, and they're all very hard to keep alive in this environment. Okay. There's a lot of look how classy our garden is, and also you can't afford enough gardeners to make this happen, and we can. Uh, what's right next to the carriage? Like, what's the first plant? The first plant next to the carriage. Um, I think... Let me Google what this is called in English. I would love to know what it's not called in English. What is not called in English? That's not... Uh, li that. <laughs> oh, an, an Leister bass. Joys of playing with a bilingual DM. <laughs> Fuck for Google. Apparently it's called a mountain ash. <laughs> well, I've really never heard that word before. Um, it has the narrow green leaves and the orange clusters. Oh. That was I was expecting. Alright. They're uh, on trellises near the entrance. Rowan. Okay. Okay. Uh, following any like decorum, uh, Lene is just going to proceed inside. Okay. I remember of the household staff. Uh, one thing that is of note is that even the members of the staff, their clothing is impeccably tailored. Everything here is like, like Anif was describing, just subtly very expensive, very tasteful. And you're kind of, uh, the group is led through the house kind of towards a space towards the back where there are these large glass windows that let in and this amount of limits, this tea room that also in a way functions as a bit of a solarium. And we see that Elise is sitting uh, in a chair, her kind of side on to the door. And uh, she kind of turns to the group with a warm smile as they enter. And that's where we'll take our break. Because we're an hour and a half in and I am not stopping this after it starts. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds perfect. Uh, we will see everyone in five to ten. We always say five to ten, and then it's fifteen. So let's lie and say 15. ten, and be <laughs> realistic and say fifteen. Uh, get some water. Pet your pets. Um, see you soon. And welcome back to our 
sort of kind of in between season one and season two thing of Feeson, our characters have mostly recovered uh, from oh that's not true they're in the process of recovering from everything that happened in season one um, and now we are watching a wonderful family reunion as Linnea has been summoned to her mother in their Uppsala apartments and she's brought both Astrid and Frederick for backup. Elise, they're here. Elise is sitting in this, you know, of course, ornate chair. Everything in this room was obviously carved by hand and is made with imported materials and is um, rather stately while still being rather bright. And you've got these large windows letting in a lot of the light. And there's there's a half a second where she looks as though she's about to stand, but then she sees Linnea enter with two other people. And instead we see Elise remain seated and she first looks to Linnea. Linnea, it's so good to see you, please sit. Mr. Orison, also a joy to see you, and Miss Lindberg, I'm excited to meet you as well. Please, everyone take a seat. Uh, Why does your mom know my name? Linnea's just gonna look pointedly at Frederick, like... Uh. Uh, Instead of taking a seat, Frederick does the usual servant thing of trying to become a part of the furniture. Uh, I assume there's a seat like directly in front of Elise. Yeah, imagine there's a couple of different chairs, so y'all have a an opportunity to make a choice around where you think it is appropriate for you to sit. Of course, every location is a choice. You could sit kind of right next to Elise in a separate chair. There's also a couch kind of directly opposite. And then I think an additional uh, standalone chair. So two people could sit on the couch or everyone could kind of take their own piece of furniture. And uh, you'll also notice, or, yep. Um, I, Linnea will um, take the like most directly in front of her mother's seat on the couch um, and kind of guide Astrid next to her on the couch. Um, uh, That's good because I was, Astrid was debating whether or not she try and do what Frederick's doing or follow you. <laughs> uh, mother, hello. Well, good to see you, you're looking well. Thank you. I. It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you for making time to come and see me. And Elise will put a hand uh, on the corner of the table. And about 10 seconds later, a uh, four different uh, members of the house staff come in and set four different small teapots down on the table, along with a small service for each one. Um, and what you'll see kind of in front of you is um, the teapots have um, individually everyone's favorite tea um, inside of them. That includes Linnea and Frederick and also Astrid. And the members of the staff will pour the first cup for everyone before exiting the room. Being not, I assume this is no surprise to Linnea, so she's just going to pick up her her mug and I swapped out my cocoa for a water, but um, uh, kind of just do like a happy little sniff, uh, and uh, blow on it a little bit, and then just kind of hold it. She's, you know, hot. Uh, I trust the ride over was comfortable. Yes, very. Um, Thank you. The horses are looking well, um, as is to be expected. Uh, is that a new driver? I didn't recognize him. 
there are a number of new members of the staff to support this particular townhome. I believe the uh, driver, your more um, the, the the one that you you grew up knowing, uh, Yorick, he um, is back at the family's main estate. That tracks. I wanted to ask him about his sister, but um, well, another time. I would love to learn, I so the travel over here was all right. What about the um, travels before that? I hear y'all have been up to some interesting adventures in these last couple of months. I'd love to hear more about what each of you has been up to. Uh, Linnea is gonna set her, her mug down and kind of just rub her arm a little bit. And well, not all carriage rides went uh, as smoothly as this last one. Um, one was destroyed uh but we all came out okay um and uh she'll she'll look to astrid um per upstairs downstairs rules i think she's going to just ignore frederick for the moment um as is appropriate um appropriate contextually not appropriate uh in terms of you know what I mean. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, we, we got out, saw some of the countryside, um, made some new friends. Uh, I think I'm kind of rounding out my education, which is very exciting. Uh, um, I do hear the countryside is particularly lovely from the sea. Haven't been there in quite a long time. Uh, have you been there recently? Well, we haven't been there in quite some time, but well, how was your tea? And Elise looks disappointed for a moment. And what you would know is that Elise only looks disappointed if she wants to look disappointed. That is a intentional, not break in her mask, but rather a uh, prickle, a spine that goes out and that she knows Linnea will see. Could you roll me an observation test while you're doing this, Elise? I believe you have seven dice for this. Oh, yes, sorry. I thought, let me pull up my dice roller. I got one six out of seven. One six. Fortunately, that's enough in this game, in <laughs> most cases. Uh, besides, you know Linnea well enough to know, you, you know, definitely leaving a lot of things out. Um, but the most important thing right now is that as she is rubbing that arm, um, because this is still while Astrid and Linnea are recovering. Um, yeah, she's not that healthy. Um, but they're swelling, there's bruising, and they've tried to make everything look proper. Um, but it's this point that you first, uh, lay eyes on and therefore notice the extent of the injuries. Uh, as Linnea picks her mug back up, um... Please, Ava, for the love of everything, if I have to do this for our, our cup, not mug. Cup. Cup, her cup. I'm sorry. I didn't see the chat. I couldn't figure out what you were saying. Her, uh... <laughs> they don't have mugs, you're proper! I know, I'm sorry. Her, her Jenny Toss. Um, <laughs> her bone china. I'm so sorry. Thank you! Um, as she picks up her tea and it's container um did it just smell when she had taken a, a whiff of it earlier did it smell normal i mean are you are, are we talking the the sommelier sniff or are we talking an investigation sniff i mean both 
I mean, she's. Uh, I mean, in that case, you can roll for it. She would like to just enjoy the smell of a good tea, but also just, you know, weird stuff's been going on. Like, two out of three of her party members are packed to the gills with some sort of concoctions. <laughs> so, you know, best to be wary. Um, what, uh, just regular investigation? Um, you can pick investigation or vigilance because, you know, it's just paranoia at this point. Definitely would like, uh, investigation. So that's, um, it's just the, the dice under the scale, right? Uh, and your attribute. And the attribute. Oh, God. Because if you're not trained in a skill, you still get to roll the attribute. While Linnea is rolling that, while Eva's rolling that, um, Astrid is occasionally like looking at Frederick to be like, am I doing this right? So as not to bother Linnea. Yeah, Frederick's just steel-faced. Uh, your tea smells um, untampered with and brewed to perfection. Like this was exactly two minutes at 90 degrees loose leaf perfect She's like someone someone had like a little a little hand clock and timed your tea she's going to sip it with a happy sigh and Louise can't help a smile and settles into her chair a bit more comfortably but still with this impeccable rigid posture as she watches Linnea maybe relax a little bit um, so, please. So I was gonna say if if there's like a relax and kind of just a a gap in the conversation, um, especially noticing like <clears throat> her mother's disapproval or not disapproval that um, uh, shift in her appearance uh, and back again, Linnea is gonna feel the need to feel some of that science, science, silence, um and uh not nervously but there is going to be a recounting of like the safe parts of the adventure and like the, the smell of the sea and the the nice parts of the boat ride uh which will absolutely not include a description of the boat um but uh you know the the view of the horizon and and the forest and um a description of the town and uh, all the good food that they ate and the interesting uh yeah local cuisine and uh you know like like a kind of a boring travel log but enthusiastic because like some of that food was really good um while Linnea is recounting, Elise is nodding, sipping on her tea, and watching the expressions of Astrid and Frederick very closely. Because she's trying to gauge, are there moments when they're wincing? Is there moments where either Elise doesn't expect uh, a break in uh, Frederick's facade, but Astrid is this unknown quantity in a number of ways. Uh, so Astrid is getting a little bit more of this um, regal side eye uh, from Elise while this tale is being told. is very focused on trying to figure out how to drink the tea properly. So she's just like staring at Linnea's hands. And Linnea's hands are you know, trained her whole life perfect, but she's kind of making sure that they're visible for, to Astrid. Like, you know, she she'll turn her her uh, cup every once in a while so that like both sides are visible or like the, the, the fingers are visible and um, uh, she'll rarely like look over in a like did you get that sort of look but she's very aware that like she's modeling behavior for Astrid at the same time. Uh, so I'd say Astrid's not super listening to what Linnea is saying. <laughs> And, like, at one point, she finally does get the courage to, like, pour her own tea. 
And I don't know how well she does. <laughs> I imagine there's a bit of rattling of the china. Um, I'll say I know, you have Frederick as like this solid rock behind you and Linnea's currently doing an okay job in trying to distract her mom. Um, but you don't spill on your dress, but there is just a little bit of tea on the saucer that should have been in the cup. Yeah, she's happy with that. It's um, better than expected. <laughs> And uh, Linnea will absolutely just keep her, going until... What should Frederick roll to make sure she remains? Oh, I just texted you. Uh, manipulation. Manipulation. You're trying to lie with your face. Hmm. Fine. No successes. So, there are a few times where Frederick maybe not necessarily winces, um, but, like, doesn't stop an eye roll in time, or you see the hands flex a little. Um, Frederick, uh, what story beats that Linnea is trying to sail past? Uh, let's say which three story beats out of season one um, is Linnea trying to sail past that you accidentally give away? Uh, I want to say the carriage ride, definitely. Um. So you learn, you get the gist that indeed, maybe there's also a little moment where, where Linnea does this with her arm again. Some of her injuries are definitely related to a carriage ride gone horribly wrong. Um, do the hole that she fell into. Where she found uh, an incapacitated Rolo staring at her at the bottom. Yes, and um, the asylum. Sanatorium, but I see sanatorium. what you mean. Yes. <laughs> it was an asylum. Uh, they visited um, a sanatorium. Um, and I'm sure Linnea tries to make it sound casual, um, but they were both paranoid and terrified. It is a weird tourist destination, to be fair. Yes, it, Linnea can't quite make a, a, a sound argument as for why they went there without giving away that they were being sneaky and investigative. And I think for the falling in the hole, there was definitely the totally legitimate, like, oh, you know, uh, in our exploration of the city, you know, there is this well-known uh, massive cathedral, church, cathedral, um, church, church. Uh, he was trying to make it a cathedral, but you killed him. So proud of it. He kind of brought <laughs> it on himself. <laughs> but you know, so totally legitimate place that we would check out, like just wandering by um but i i think in her explanation like there's that uh elise has this brief flare of hope when you say you visited a church while you were traveling it did have some lovely stained glass but then like she gets into like the over explaining like when someone's a bad liar and they like add too many details like it's just too many details of like the wrong sort to avoid like what they were really doing um, yeah. Okay. Um, and you did give away most of the carriage ride already, so I'll add that maybe Astrid needs to have a little nudge uh, when there is a little too much talk about your new favorite pub. Yeah. I mean, yes, the food was amazing. Stumpled is your, your new favorite. Um, but you slip up and mention something about a beer relay before you go back to drinking your tea. Astrid, like, reaches over with, like, her hand and, like, taps. 
Or wait. Did Astrid say something about the beer really like? No, no, when Nea gets a little carried away in describing the cool new things she tasted and did in that pub. Okay. She... Astrid would lean over and just like tap her leg through the skirt. Uh, also, just to be clear, Linnea does not mention the name of the tavern, the drunken sailor. She okay. skips over that. I um, mean, that's smart. <laughs> and I think she'd, uh, a fair, really, uh, really, really good beer, uh, is what I meant. Like, you know, um, just to, to try things, you know, not, nothing, no overindulgence. Um, it was really good. Um, and and your favorite thing on their menu? There was, um, you know, languages has never been my biggest strong suit. That was sort of more Agnes's uh, strength. Um, there was this. It would certainly be another horizon you could expand on. And I might, you know, it was such a beautiful language, and I don't want to butcher it, but there was this... They they leave this milk out, I think, uh, to cure, maybe? Uh, in with the fish? I might be misremembering that. There was also a very good dessert. Frederick, do you remember what the dessert was called? I'll get you the recipe. Maybe Cook can make it. I think you'd quite like it, actually. Suppose I would. Now that... I appreciate you bringing me up to speed on the... on all of the different ways you've been enjoying the world and getting out and experiencing new things and perhaps making yourself ready to settle down. Eventually, absolutely. Who doesn't Eventually, want to put down roots and grow? Roots yeah. need time to dig down deep and become strong. Some roots are shallower, like a cabbage. Which are uprooted easily and destroyed quickly. There's a reason why we have persisted in the way that we have for so long. But they're very good it's for time you. you start growing down deeper. This is about the suitor, isn't it? Elise nods with approval. Yes, you might know his name, um, a young man, uh, very well put together. I, I do think it would be a good match. He is Johan Nystrom. Does that ring actually mean, ring a bell? Uh, the Johan part doesn't. The Nystrom family is um, an old name that... Um, like they're 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 nobility slash aristocrats, but they haven't adapted well enough, so they're they're turning a little bit impoverished. Uh, are they known for anything like actively good or actively bad, or are they just sort of whatever? They're very middle of the pack. They're very don't rock the boat, don't pick too strong a side. You know, ride it out. You know, if something's very clearly going to happen, throw your support at the right person when it already can't go wrong anymore. Don't risk too much. Okay. I know the name. I don't believe we've met. There were a few functions with the family there, I think. But I, I've not met Johan, right? Probably not since you were children at, you know, one of the, a ball. You might have danced together in the past, but 
they have mostly kept to themselves these last few years, but now Johan is ready to meet you and to strike a match, and I think it will be a strong one. I can't wait to uh, meet him again. Um, what, out of curiosity, um, aside from settling down strong roots, uh, which I, I take your point, um, what makes you think this would be a strong match? Um, I can sort of see where it might be for uh, their family, but um, for me, for us, for you, what, uh, where's that strength? Would you like Mr. Orson, Orson and Miss Limburg to leave first before I answer that? Uh, no, I mean, they're still enjoying tea and, um, they, they can stay, that's, that's all right been through quite a lot of traveling. I'm sure you have. And Elise leans forward, puts her teacup down. It kind of doesn't even make a click how delicately it's put down on that saucer. And she leans back, back perfectly straight. You have been gallivanting around, making quite the name for yourself, one that stands in direct opposition to the name that this family has been building for generations. I think I've made a name for myself? Or at least you're trying to with a detective agency or whatever you're calling it. It's working to mess up prospects for Agnes. It's working to make other families take a second look at us anytime they're thinking about business propositions or social connections. It's working to make things very difficult for this family, which the last time I checked, you were still a part of. I mean, I am. I, I mean, Agnes is the better prospect for just about anybody. Why isn't she getting married off? Because you, going around, doing what you're doing so openly, is making things difficult for her. People start looking at her and they think, what does Agnes get up to when no one else is looking? What side business is Agnes running? And even though we both know that's ridiculous, we also know people talk and people have quite the imaginations. So if I settle down, what are her prospects? Where, where does she go? The sky's the limit for her if we can make sure that you don't mess it up. She is not here. Um, for us to have this conversation together. Do you think her presence would have helped? Uh, the answer is no. Linnea, I know this is hard for you, but we all have to make choices. We all have to do things for the family in order to keep the family strong, in order to in order to to protect and in order to make sure that the people around us continue to thrive. What did you give up? This isn't a conversation about me. 
This is a conversation about you and your really wonderful match that I think could work with Johan. You just need to give it a chance. I mean, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm happy to listen. Um... like to think you would take that into account. I'm not here to be combative. But you are here to lie extensively about what you've been up to. I haven't directly lied. The name of the tavern was the Drunken Sailor. I was going to find out from the menu you gave. But I appreciate I do appreciate you sharing. I'm not looking to, to shackle you. I'm not looking to, I'm not, I just, I want to see you thrive and I want, I want to see you start putting down those roots. This is the path forward for that. Is he waiting? In the, in the library? In a, another sitting room? And he's here, I assume. I thought it best to give you some time to collect your thoughts. And yes, we both know I could summon him any moment, but I would prefer it if it was at a time of your choosing. Over lunch, perhaps. I, th I think very we're right here. I, I assume we're all invited. That would be... I don't believe it would be the best foot forward for you to rekindle your connection with Johan, with so many other people here. Of course, an appropriate chaperone should be there, but understood. Uh... The journey did sort of um, give me a bit of an appetite and uh, to approach this with a clear and level head and in all fairness um, you know I'm not always the most gracious uh, when I'm hungry so if we could eat first um, perhaps before uh, our reintroduction um, and then perhaps um Maybe one of the gardeners could uh, give Astrid a, a tour of the grounds, um, if that is something that you would enjoy, Astrid, I assume. And Elise nods approvingly, a actual congenial smile across her lips. I, I think that is the workings of a excellent plan. Right. We'll make a few revisions, but perfect. Um, and I, I would like um, a moment if um, it was a long journey here, if there is a maid or someone um, could help me with my hair. Um, made is not the word I'm looking for, but you know what I mean. Um, um, I mean, it's your mother. Of course she brought your lady's maid. Yes. My, if my lady's maid uh, could help me with my hair um, and just uh, could freshen up, I think that would be best.
This is your home as well. It's good to have you here. Very nice to be back. Um, and for all the circumstances, um, that that is a, an authentic. Uh, Linnea is comfortable here overall. Um, does miss it to to an extent. Um, definitely prefers uh, going off adventuring, but um, it's still a home. And as the local ducks are heard vaguely in the background, I thought it was just me. I'm so glad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard seagulls earlier too, and I was like. <laughs> Hopefully it's thematically appropriate seagulls or crows. I mean, it's fine. In general, we also have wild dogs being in the distance because of my creatures. And everyone in this world owns cats because we have wild beasts. Uh, we will uh, fade away from the tea party as Elise goes back to her preparations. And uh, Linnea is being escorted to her room. Uh, Frederick, of course, at her shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would like to actually hold back in the room with Elise for a moment. Okay, yeah. Like, <clears throat> like once uh, Linnea and Astrid have exited, I'd be like, <clears throat> Madam, if I may speak out of turn. You may. Considering Linnea's proclivities and penchant for indiscretions, would you be willing to consider, now I understand it's definitely a more drastic approach, but disavowing her and allowing her to grow to fear her own way as a woman in the world. The oak does not forgo one of its branches. I will not be disowning any part of my daughter, any part of my family. Yes, she is wild and she is unruly. And yes, if I may speak out of turn, she gets up to some things that make me But she is still mine. Never, ever suggest something like that again. Understood. With that out of the way, I do appreciate the close attention you pay to my dear Linnea, and I would, of course, like to see you continue in her service. Well, mine. Don't forget that. I shall always do my best to make sure Linnea is at least going in the proper direction. And Elise just nods, trusting Frederick at his word. She doesn't have anything else to say to that. She just knows it's true. Linnea and Astrid have been put in a room. Basically, Linnea, this room is, uh, I mean, it's fairly new. This, this town home is fairly recent addition, and yet it is exactly your room, because of course it is. Uh, they haven't assigned Astrid her own room, so you're sharing. They have assigned Astrid her own lady's maid, who is currently having a minor nervous breakdown looking at her hair which, despite having done no strenuous activity, has still somehow collapsed. Um, they're sort of, they're, they're doing the hovering thing where they haven't been giving 
specific instructions yet other than freshen up, so they're doing the... They're in your aura waiting for things. Uh, do you two happen to know where you could fetch something that's appropriate, that has a little bit of kick to it for us? A little bit of what, ma'am? Kick. Alcohol. Go find us alcohol. Small amounts, just something to take the nerves off. Miss Linnea has a bar in her room. Well, go find it somewhere else. Of course. Thank you. They leave, somewhat put out, because they were hoping for gossip. Um, um, Astrid follows them out and shuts the door behind them. <laughs> Fair enough. She does not appreciate the hovering. <laughs> and then turns around and goes, are you okay? No. Do no, you want me? but it'll be fine. Okay. It won't be fine. But it'll be over soon. Soonish. You want me to sneak away from the gardener and follow you wherever you're going? I don't know where we're going to be. Um... But, but, um, I did think perhaps you would genuinely enjoy the garden tour, because it is probably gorgeous. Um, uh, they're always adding new things, uh, and who knows, there might be something, um, we could appropriate for the manor. Um, you know, a clipping here, or a full bare-rooted plant there, um, or perhaps he knows of someone who needs a job for cheap. Very true. Um, and, um, you know, if, if perhaps that goes quickly and you wanted to take a house tour, I'm sure someone would be happy to, um, to do that. Um, and who knows where you would end up, uh, I say that knowing that there is a very nice library uh, somewhere around here. Um, that aside, if we happen to bump paths later, um, that would be delightful. And if we happen to bump paths, then you happen to ask me how The roan is growing outside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It might be an indicator that you want me to make everything kind of end. I feel like there's a metaphor here that isn't quite holding up. I don't mean I kill him, but if you would like me to do that, you can <laughs> say, yeah. Um. Um, so not out loud, but like recollecting our conversation from before, was there anything topical that was non-lethal that would make someone you, ill, like stomach sick? Uh, If you rubbed the fresh ash berry, it, it has some toxins. I didn't see whether or not it was. Uh, hemlock can be absorbed through the skin, which was why I specifically saying don't touch the hemlock. Yeah, that whole like non-lethal part was kind of key to my request. <laughs> um, the, I do appreciate having Actually, it. sleeping pills. So sleeping pills back then more commonly use things like opiates and opioids and also normally had some mixture of other stuff and they could be applied topically to like knock someone out and they could also be inhaled um, applied topically does involve grinding them down and blending them with a carrier yes 
unless you're first cutting someone open, in which case, see the comment I just placed in chat in general. <laughs> um. He's a backup character. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm, I could... I'm just, I'm just saying, if you want to commit a murder in Uppsala, please have a spare character. I'll have one. I'll make it up tonight. Don't worry. Um, Every that time is all we I talk. ask. I'll happily let you do it, but you know, considering we're starting a new season. Yeah. Every time we talk, uh about this particular like situation Linnea is going to stress non-lethal uh for a yes. number of reasons um, um also like there is that fear in the back of her mind that Linnea herself is going to like mix something up so like she's got her danger uh hemlock bag that she's avoiding but then like yeah she also doesn't want to just like poison herself no, no, you're um, gonna be rolling every time you touch that bag oh yeah absolutely um, I see all that. She would, um, while they are, like, not at lunch, uh, like to mix a little bit of that uh, nausea medication. Like, just a little bit with um, some port or something from her uh, bedroom bar. Which I've never considered, but now I think I need to redo the entire house to include. So... You just have one of those globes that opens. Perfect. I assume there's like whiskey or port or some sort of. Oh yeah. Or sherry. I guess. I guess sherry is more of a women's woman's drink. You get the the uh, your favorites that are also considered appropriate. Yes. So none of the smoky whiskeys, but yes to the port and the sherry and. Which is my favorite, but that figures. Um. Yes, port. No, let's go sherry. I feel like that's more of a lunch drink. Um, so they yeah, learned. She, she wants something. Um, she wants to put like enough that it'll take a while to like kick in, like not immediately. Visually so avoiding the hemlock bag. Noted. Uh, um, okay. Did I, yes. Sorry, did I say I I put some nettle in there, right? No, you put snow algae in there. And hemlock so, and pills. There were no nettles mentioned. The nettles and the algae were in the tea. No, I think there were nettles mentioned. There, no, they were in a tea blend. She didn't make like a packet of nettles. Oh, yeah, yeah. So unless you want to like sift out the tea again, I think a tea blend she would just have in like a, like a non shady pocket, like a, a little bag that was like. Do you have any pockets bag. that are non shady? I'm just saying, like a a, a non uh, dubious <laughs> apothic. I have a feeling that everything you're wearing is dubious by association at this point. Fair. But, um... Yes. Like a... Like a, like a yeah, a small handbag or clutch or something. Something... Fair enough. Yes. That wouldn't be weird if she pulled out a thing of tea. I'd say, is Wild frozen? But I think we lost him completely. We did. Let's... We're gonna go to break real quick. Uh, while well, we check in on that, yep. and we'll be right back. Be right back. Look, we have everyone again. Can't discuss murdering someone's mother without their loyal servant nearby. Uh, of course so. Not. We're currently dealing with preparations for Linnea meeting her suitor, uh, who may be poisoned but not murdered, I think was the summary of the conversation between Linnea and Astrid. Uh, Frederick is loose in the Uppsala townhouse, uh, but first I wanted to ask if Elise had any plans, plots, maybe 
a, a warning to the suitor? I think that Elise has already given all appropriate warnings to the suitor. So uh, Johan, or rather Johan's mother, would have a good idea of what's being walked into. And then the mother would have communicated what's appropriate to Johan. Um, Elise is doing two things. Uh, the first is in the moment after Frederick leaves, she just has to take this deep breath because the, the thought of Linnea no longer being a part of the family is just absolutely rips at her heart. And in a moment of weakness, uh, she pulls or she draws up her skirt, pulls out a hip flask, and will just take a big, long swig from that flask. And then slowly just kind of breathe out, enjoying the burn, and put it back, and then get to work. She's preparing the garden, um, setting out a table, putting out a tent, uh, making sure there's seating areas that are at appropriate distances away so that she can act as a chaperone or she could have a lady's maid, but have appropriate people sitting nearby, but not at the table. Very good. Uh, all right, Frederick, you're loose in the house. Dare I ask what you're up to? Uh I'm going to use uh, Servant Connections to try and get a bead on this Johan. Okay. Uh, who are you asking? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'll start with the gossips in the, in the, in the washing area. Oh, uh, the washing area. Always a good start. Um, and how do you approach this? Are you asking, like, general gossip? Are you leading the conversation anywhere? Are you standing conspicuously nearby while they're gossiping in general? Uh, no, he, he knows it's best to be um, give and take with him. So he walks into the room and is like, pardon me, but I think this needs watching and continues to take off his jacket. And well, essentially he's just in his undershirt around now. All right, so you're giving the gun show and you're mm. taking the gossip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, I mean, yes, lots of, uh, um, I wouldn't call it swooning because they have to finish working, but there is a lot of fluttering of eyelashes and some nudges and some staring. Um, also by some of the men, obviously, because you're just very fit at this point. It's just, it's, it's, it's a good view. Um, and they do the thing where they keep talking, so it's not hopefully too obvious that they're staring. Um, though currently their main topic of conversation isn't necessarily Johan, it's Linnea. Um, and that weird, weird friend she brought. And the, did you hear she got run over by a burning carriage? Um, while fleeing for her life, etc. So it's it's already way bigger and way weirder. And they got they get the gist right, all the details wrong. Um, there's a lot of you know <sighs> judgment, honestly. But in a, it's not like they're looking down on her there's just a lot of can you believe what she's doing to her family acting like this because you know most servants here are quite loyal and there's a lot of oh her poor mother um can she think of how her actions reflect on the household you know and, and in general these servants consider themselves better than servants of other houses because they work for the homegrowns so there's a lot of Oh, and it was awful. This other maid at the market, she gave me this sneer. And, you know, there's a lot of trickle down shame almost that they're concerned about because it's also their reputation and their livelihoods. And a lot of, you know, I already knew she was wild, but we thought she had more sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. 
Well, that's all they're gonna give. I guess I'm gonna have to get toward the Maestrom servants, see if any of them are around. Uh, one of his footmen certainly is. Um, he's in. If you're if you go actively looking for one, uh, you find one in a kitchen. Um, put in a corner where he is absolutely not in the way of anyone doing anything useful um, and having a, just like a bit of bread and cheese and looking just incredibly uncomfortable. Mm. I'll uh, offer him a smoke and, you know, gesture to outside the, uh, like the, back, the back entrance. He looks a little wary, but he will definitely not pass up a free smoke in addition to his questionable lunch. <laughs> I guess while in smoking conversation mode, I'd be like, so what's it like with your ward? Compared to yours, very dull. Mm -hmm. Like, dull, dull. Like, not, not, you know, few outings, few hobbies. No, I know what you're fishing for. No mistresses, no out of wedlock babies, no scandals. Not even the above board ones? No. No, he seems quite content being at home, painting. Uh, he's expressed a desire for a large family. Mm. Sounds like the perfect match for the young miss. Wait, because she sounds a little wild for him. I mean, I, I think it's wonderful he's willing to overlook all that, but, you know, he'd like someone to, you know, be at home with him, not some uh, adventurous socialite. Mm. Do they run a rather strict household? I mean, not the worst. I get my breaks, I get my pay. Uniforms is a little scratchy, but hmm. I haven't seen any corporal punishment, so there's you know that's that's good. Everything is perfectly serviceable. Serviceable. That's that's a good word for all of this. I mean he's only the third son, so he could have gone quite wild but he didn't he's very adequate <sighs> wonderful yes, it, it, it sounds like just the type of arrangement that could maybe help calm your mistress down <laughs> you know get married pop out a bunch of babies, they'll be, they'll be settled, she'll be busy enough. Oh. Throw a ball of once every two years. I'm sure she will take to that quite well. Oh, match made in heaven. Let's hope their meeting goes well then. Mm. I mean, personal interest. If she, uh, your mistress and my master hook up I'll probably get a pay rise. Yeah. Frederick is going to... Uh, this gentleman, by the way, has finished his cigarette and is looking at you, hopefully, for another. I'm gonna hand him... I want to get headbutted by one of the cats who lives here. <laughs> Go hand on the cigarette and then walk. Essentially, exit the exit the conversation. 
I'm starting to prep that he knows the name at one. Okay. Uh, I know Eva's very busy with tech stuff. Uh, but as we briefly discussed in our break that we had to take because ooh, Wild is frozen again because Wild's internet's having hiccups. I'm afraid we're going to lose him again. Uh, we were going to end our RP here for the evening. Uh, briefly start discussion of castle upgrades and then have Sarah come back next week to... Well, I was going to say finish this, but having Astrid slash Baker around has made me very uncomfortable using that terminology. Um, so we'll say continue this. That's a little more open-ended and a little less murderous. That sounds good, right? That works for me. <laughs> I'm feeling very judged. You are. Your okay. feelings are correct. Okay, we have lost... We have lost Wild again. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, the other option is that we call it here and we also do castle upgrades next week so Eva can stop panicking about cameras. I think that's probably for the best. I think it's probably for the best. So we're just going to go say goodbye. We already told everyone where our Twitters and Instagrams are. We had a great time and we're going to let the tag goblins win for once. Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and we will continue this next week. Bye, friends. Bye. Bye, friends. <laughs>